Hello everyone, welcome back to the Smoky Sun Channel. Due to having a short week to prepare, this will be somewhat of a short video. This video is about a serial killer in Pennsylvania who terrorized the community back in the 1990s. But before we begin, remember to hit the like and subscribe button and punch the notification bell to get notified when new videos drop. With all that said, here we go. Harvey Miguel Robinson's upbringing was marked by family troubles. His father, also named Harvey, battled alcoholism and had a criminal record, having been arrested for manslaughter after fatally assaulting his mistress. In school, the younger Robinson was recognized for his athletic abilities and received awards for his essays. However, he also had a dark side with multiple arrests for burglary and resistant arrest. He struggled with drug addiction and displayed early signs of sociopathy, lacking the ability to distinguish right from wrong, harboring a disdain for authorities, and deriving pleasure from instilling fear in others. On the night of August 5, 1992, at the age of 17, Harvey Robinson unlawfully entered the home of 29-year-old Joan Burkhart with the intention of burglary ultimately stealing just $50 from her dresser. Four days later, her lifeless body was discovered on her living room floor after a concerned neighbor reported her stereo playing nonstop. An autopsy revealed that Burkhardt had been sexually assaulted and brutally beaten to death. A year later, Robinson targeted 15-year-old Charlotte Schoimer while she was delivering newspapers in the morning. He abducted her, took her to a wooded area, and sexually assaulted and fatally stabbed her, slashing her throat in the process. Shortly after, Robinson broke into the residence of John and Denise Sam Cali, burglarizing it and stealing John's firearm collection. He also indulged in the whiskey. Three days later, Robinson entered into another woman's home with the intent to harm and kill her. However, upon discovering the woman sleeping with her boyfriend, he redirected his violent intentions towards the daughter. Although he assaulted and strangled her, she miraculously survived. It is believed that Robinson had been stalking the mother for several days, much like his patterns with other victims. Eight days later, Robinson returned to the Sam Callie residence in the middle of the night. He intended on murdering Denise while John was away. He entered the house through an open window, awakening Denise. As she attempted to flee, Robinson pursued her, ultimately pinning her down after she bit his arm. He subjected her to a brutal assault which included punching and cutting her lip and attempted to strangle her. Her cries for help alerted a neighbor, forcing Robinson to flee. The police found a butcher knife wrapped in a blanket near the bathroom door. A month later, Robinson assaulted and killed Jessica Jean Fortney, who was brutally beaten and stabbed to death. Her lifeless body was discovered in the living room surrounded by splatters of blood. Then, four days later, Robinson attempted to return to the Sam Callie residence to complete the murder of Denise. His plan was thwarted by the back door being equipped with an alarm system. Realizing that Denise's life was in perpetual danger, the police department assigned young officer Brian Lewis to stay at the Sam Kelly house in case the killer returned. One night, Robinson, armed with a firearm, made another attempt to enter the house. Officer Lewis heard the attempts to unlock the doors and watched as Robinson broke in through the deliberately left open window. Lewis identified himself as a police officer and ordered Robinson to halt, but instead Robinson began shooting at Lewis who, in return, fired, ultimately injuring Robinson. Robinson managed to escape, leaving behind a trail of blood. Hours later, after the police searched local hospitals, they received a call from Lehigh Valley Hospital where Robinson had sought treatment for cuts and a gunshot wound. At the hospital, Robinson attempted to flee again, but he finally surrendered when confronted by an officer. Robinson is also suspected of attempting to murder Leslie Gerhardt 
five years before Burkhardt's murder. During this incident, an intruder removed the bedroom window screen and entered the house while Gerhardt was staying with a friend. The intruder attacked Gerhardt with a brick, but fled when her friend screamed. Both Robinson and Gerhardt attend an elementary school together, and he is suspected of stalking her through telephone calls and in-person encounters in the weeks leading up to the attack. Robinson's modus operandi involved stalking women and murdering them during home invasions when they were alone. He'd enter their homes through an open window and wore gloves to avoid leaving forensic evidence. Inside, Robinson would assault, beat, and typically kill his victims through stabbing or strangulation. If his victims survived, he would stalk them for days to determine the best time to strike again. Robinson was linked to the three murders through DNA evidence leading to his conviction in November 1994 and a subsequent death sentence for all three cases. At just 19 years old at the time, he became the youngest serial killer in the nation's history. In June 2001, Lehigh County Judge Edward Reedman upheld Robinson's murder convictions but overturned the death sentence for the Burkhart and Schmoyer killings, citing improper sentence instruction to the jury by the trial judge. In December 2004, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court affirmed the death sentence in the Fortnay case and upheld the first-degree murder convictions in the other cases, which were returned to Lehigh County Court. Gladys Burkhart, Joan's mother, expressed her desire to move beyond the specter of the man who murdered her daughter as she aged. She emphasized that dwelling on it was not beneficial to her health nor her husband's given their limited time left. I'm 83 now, and it's not beneficial to my health or my husband's health to dwell on it. We only have a short time left, and we need to make the most of it. When Governor Edwin Dale set an execution date for Robinson on April 4th, Gladys welcomed the decision, hoping that it would finally remove the monster from the world. This is something that's been waiting to happen that this monster is put out of the world. However, she acknowledged that this was just a formality as it would lead to a stay while the next phase of appeals played out. She questioned the efficiency of the legal system if it could not carry out its threats and wondered how someone like Harvey Robinson could seemingly control it. I wish they would get it over with. What good is the legal system if it doesn't carry out its threats? How can someone like Harvey Robinson control the legal system? Denise Sam Kelly, who owns a Lehigh Valley transportation company, chose not to dwell on Robinson considering him useless to society. She believed that if he were put to death, there would be no loss. We move on. He's useless to society, so if they do put him to death, there's no loss. In 1996, a made-for-TV movie titled No One Could Protect Her, starring Joanne Kearns, was based on the Robinson case. Kearns portrayed a survivor of the attack, with the character's name changed to Jessica Rayner. The film primarily focused on the life of Denise Sam Cowley. As of this video, Harvey Miguel Robinson sits on death row, awaiting his execution for the heinous crimes he committed. That will do it for this video. If you haven't already, please consider pressing the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and press the notification bell. And leave a comment if you so choose. Stay curious everyone, and see you next time.